good morning today i'll be talking about radiographic quality assurance in film based radiography the contents of my lecture include an introduction schedule of the task in which i'll be elaborating about the daily task weekly task monthly task yearly task and the conclusion so what is the need of a quality assurance program in dental radiography radiology basically is a specialized department within your general dental facility whether it's be whether it be your hospital setup or your private dental clinic so every dentist who use dental radiography on an everyday basis must ensure that there is optimal exposure and film processing conditions are maintained to make sure that there is a consistent output of high quality radiographs from your facility so quality assurance program in dental radiography is nothing but just a series of procedures designed to ensure optimal and consistent operation of each component in the imaging chain so that there is consistent output of high quality radiographs that can provide adequate diagnostic information with the least amount of cost and the least amount of radiation exposure this is the schedule of the radiographic quality assurance procedures there are few tasks that you have to do daily few tasks that you have to do weekly few tasks that you will have to do monthly and then the yearly task all these i'll be elaborating in the coming slides so moving on to the daily task you have got five daily tasks and to begin with the first daily task is to compare your radiographs with your reference film this is the most inexpensive way to make sure that your film in fact every single film given out from your radio radiology facility is of optimum quality and optimum density and to ensure this you have to basically take a reference film the need for this is one of the most common reasons for your poor radiograph or radiograph which are not of adequate diagnostic quality is because of poor film processing especially because of the repeated use of depleted solutions so to overcome this you have to constantly monitor the quality of your radiographs that is being given out from your facility and for this you will have to take a reference film ideally on the day that the film processing solutions are being replaced make sure you take a film of a patient in the proper exposure parameters and with the op adequate object source distance and it is processed according to the uh, instructions given by the manufacturers and then you get a good radiograph of optimal density and contrast which you can mount it as you can see in the picture on one corner of your view box after that this film basically serves as your reference film every single radiograph given out from your facility every single day has to be compared with your reference film to make sure that they are of optimum quality as well as density and contrast now this is almost like you know it could vary from you and from me because our visual you know visual acuity could be actually varying so there is much more better accurate methods that you can actually follow and two of that is your sensitometer and densitometer and the second one is your step wedge technique <clears throat> so sensitometer is nothing but a machine in which if you place a film it will expose the film to a calibrated light pattern so this is a machine and once you place a film you get actually a light pattern of this sort that you can see in this image and the film will be exposed to exactly this sort of exposures okay once you get a film with a calibrated light pattern exposure being done you process it according to your techniques and your ad, uh, measures that you do it in your facility and that process film is actually being made to read in a density meter like this so you, as you as and when you place each of these columns in your density meter it will give out a digital reading and accordingly if that particular column is not corresponding to the standard reference you can always point out to the fact that there is something wrong in your dark room basically it could be some sort of faulty processing technique that is being followed in your dark room facility and you can rectify it immediately then and there now a much more cost effective method is basically your step wedge technique in which you have to use nothing but the discarded lead foils from your used film packets so what you will basically need is five lead foils from used film packets and you have to staple them together now once you staple all the five film packets to um, five lead foils together you will have to cut off layer by layer an amount of this lead foil so the topmost layer you will have to cut off four fifth of the topmost layer the next layer that is the second layer underneath that you will have to cut off the three fifth of it like you can see in this picture and then you have to cut off the two fifth of the third layer and the last layer you will have to cut off that is the most underneath layer you will have to just cut off one fifth 
of that layer of the fourth layer and finally you will get a five step wedge now you will have to place the step wedge onto a film and expose the film packet on the day that your processing solutions are being replaced so on the day that your processing solutions are being replaced click uh, make a uh, step wedge of this sort and place it on the film and expose it so once you process it you will get a radiographic image of five steps that is from the most darkest to the most lightest so this most darkest area will be the area where the least amount of lead foil would have been present so there's not much of you know absorption of the x-rays and that's the reason why that area of that x-ray film appears much more radio lucent or much more darker and the area which is much more whiter or your radio opaque is the area which should have been having the most thickest layer of your lead foil because that would have actually absorbed majority of your x-ray photons leading to a more radio opaque or a white color image and this is kept for your comparison for the subsequent days till you replace your processing solution the next time so till then every single radiograph has to be compared with your step wedge exposed radiograph and you can actually find out whether your radiograph is of optimum density and contrast with these five steps of this image and now moving on to the second daily task is basically entering findings in your retake log so every dental facility that has radiology as a separate room or a department there has to have a retake log a book in which the reasons for retake for every single retake has to be entered then and there every single day and the third daily task is basically nothing but replenishing a processing solution now keep it in mind you do not replenish your processing solutions every day what you have to do is basically check the levels of the processing solution at the beginning of your work day every single day before you start your radiology facility make sure you go check the levels of your processing solution if you feel that the level of your developer and your fixers are towards the bottom of the tank make sure you replenish it and that is the day that you have to replenish it basically is just an indication that you have to replenish your processing solution on that day now you have to keep another point in mind is that if you feel that the fixer solution is at the bottom of the tank you do not just change only your fixer solution you change both your developer solution as well as your fixer solution the same applies to the developer so ideally whenever you're changing your processing solutions make sure you change both your developer as well as your uh, fixing solution by mixing them according to the manufacturer's instructions the fourth point is uh, checking the temperature of your processing solutions now like i mentioned the ideal uh, processing method to be followed is your time temperature method and for that your temperature is very important so solutions should be at optimal temperature which is ideally 20 degrees celsius for your manual processing and 28 degrees celsius for your automatic processors and only if these temperatures are maintained will you be able to follow your time temperature method for your processing adequately so these are your four sorry i mentioned five earlier these are your four daily tasks that you will have to do every single day before the beginning of your work day in your radiology department so moving on to your weekly task so there are few tasks that you will have to do weekly and that the first in that is replacing your processing solution like i told you every single day check the levels of your processing solution and replace it on that particular day otherwise ideally at the end of two weeks it is always recommended to change your processing solutions because they would have become depleted either by oxidation or by atmospheric oxidation or by its overuse so the, the reasons or the uh, replacement frequency is basically determined by the rate of the use of solutions so if you are in a setup where you just have daily five to six radiographs per day two weeks or more than maybe you know five days extra than that could be the frequency in which you replace your processing solution but if you work in a facility where there's almost 100 to 150 radiographs being processed every single day the frequency of your replacement of your processing solutions would be much more shorter it could be even one week or maybe every five days also the size of tanks also play a major role in the reason for replacing of your processing solution that is larger the tanks the more longer your processing solutions can be used 
the cover being used, like I told you earlier, oxidation by atmospheric oxygen is another factor that can actually lead to depletion of the action of your processing solution. So if the covers are aptly replaced after every use, it can actually prolong the time period of your replacement of your processing solution. Now, in the end of the, everything being said and done, end of the day, it is your step wedge test or your reference films which will actually tell you when it is the time to replace your processing solution. Now, along with replacing a processing solutions, you just do not dump out the solutions and you just refill them with a new solution. You should always clean your processing equipment and then only replace them with your new processing solution. So when it comes to your manual tanks, you're supposed to be washing the tanks of any sort of debris or any sort of you know insects or any sort of foreign objects that would have fallen into your processing tanks dry the tank and then only replace it with your freshly mixed developer and your fixer solution. And when it comes to automatic processing equipment, your rollers are where your most debris can get accumulated. So make sure your rollers are adequately cleaned before the processing solutions are being replaced. And ideally when you rinse it, always make sure you rinse your tanks and rollers twice as long as recommended because if there is any sort of cleansing medium that is you would have always used some sort of a cleansing agent to clean your tank or your rollers so any residue of that cleansing agent could also hamper with the processing solutions functions so to add uh, to ensure that there is no interactions of any cleansing agent with the processing solutions make sure you rinse your tanks and rollers twice as long as that is recommended now, moving on to the third point is basically cleaning your view boxes. I showed you a picture of your view box. So if there is any sort of dirt or, you know, sort of grit over your view box, you could actually think it off as some sort of fault in your processing, which is actually a false positive, right? So to ensure that there is no sort of, you know, neg uh, you know unnecessary uh, diagnostic information being hampered because of any dirt on the view boxes at the end of every week you should make sure that the view boxes are cleaned to remove any sort of particles or defects that may interfere with your film interpretation and lastly every week i told you in your daily task you're supposed to be entering the reasons of your retake of every single retake in your retake logbook at the end of the week the duty that has been assigned to the person in charge of the radiology facility or in charge of the quality assurance is to basically review the retake log and you can actually educate the other people working. That is, it could be your assistants, it could be your technicians working and the other staffs working in your radiology room and you can actually initiate corrective actions. If it's a reason because of your projection errors, you can actually educate them on adequate pro uh, projection as well as adequate uh, uh, exposure techniques. And if it's a reason because of your processing solutions, you can actually rectify them then and there. So these are your four weekly tasks. So you have got four daily tasks, you have got four weekly tasks. Now moving on to the monthly task, that is the task that you're supposed to be doing at the end of every single month. That is basically nothing but to check your dark room safe lighting. Now, in case if your dark room safe lighting is not proper, what will happen is you will get films that are completely fogged. And if come fog films are usually of low contrast and they have a very muddy gray appearance, which is not of acceptable diagnostic quality. You are not supposed to be coming to a final diagnosis or a radiographic diagnosis with a fogged radiographic film. So inappropriate safe light filters, excessive exposure to the safe lights or stray light from any other sources could be one of one of the many reasons for improper darkroom safe lighting. So every end of every month, you should always inspect your darkroom, assess the integrity of your safe lights. That is make sure your GBX2 filters do not have any cracks in them. And it is a 15 watt bulb that has been used. Okay, and weather stripping for all your doors, that is the doors of your radiology room are properly weather stripped and there is nothing that has been damaged in that weather stri stripping. Now there are two tests that you can do actually to check your safe lighting in the dark room. One is called as a visual test and the second is called as your penny coin test. So the visual test is very simple, very inexpensive and very, you know, much more shorter in time. All that you have to do is enter your dark room, close the door and switch off the working light, okay? That is your white light. So all that you will have is 
yourself in an empty dark room with the safe light on and you are supposed to be waiting for your vision to actually adapt to that particular darkness and then check for light leaks anywhere it could be a light leak from the crack in a in your safe light filter that is your red gbx2 filter or it could be a light leak from your door there should there could be a crack in your door or from your hinges or the weather stripping could have been worn out so wherever that you feel that you are able to see any sort of light leak kindly mark that with a chalk or a masking tape so that when you on the light that is your on your white working light you are able to rectify that area of where the defect is being present the second test to check for darkroom safe lighting is basically a penny's test or your penny coin test in that you have all that you have to all that you require is a film and a penny coin or a coin just any coin <clears throat> all that you have to do is go to the dark room switch off the working light accommodate your eyesight to the working safe light and you open a packet of an exposed film in your safe light and you place a coin on top of that safe light in the area where you usually unwrap the films and the ideal time that has to be followed or the coin that has uh, ideal time recommended for the coin to be placed onto the film is basically 5 minutes and why 5 minutes is basically because that is the time that is required to unwrap and mount a full mouth set of radiographic films and once you leave that coin onto an exposed film in the dark room in safe lighting for 5 minutes then you remove the coin and you process the film in the normal processing technique that you usually follow for all the films and the moment that you see that you are able to see such an image of the coin on that exposed film you can always make sure that you can always come to a 100 percentage conclusion that your dark room safe lighting is basically improper that is your room is not light safe so this is one of the tasks that you have to do at the end of every single month okay and it is not just an iopr film but you should check ideally for your occlusal film for your bite wing films and for your manual films or whichever type of film that you use in your office every film should be checked to measure the integrity of your dark room the second monthly task is basically to clean your intensifying screens intensifying screens are used for your extra oral radiography so at the end of every month you should check for any scratches or debris clean them otherwise what will happen is once you place a film and expose it with debris within that intensifying screen you will have light areas so you will have areas in your final radiograph which is very light and that can actually hamper your diagnostic capability all right and also the supporting foam that is you will have a foam to actually tightly close this intensifying screen to adequate ad, uh, optimum contact between your intensifying screen and the film so if that intensifying screen is not able to adequately close and if the supporting foam is starting to become worn away what will happen is the radiographic image that comes out of these intensifying screens will lose its sharpness that is it will not be of adequate diagnostic quality so the third monthly task is to rotate your film stock so everybody knows by the end of the month all your x ray films or an adequate amount of your x ray films would have been used up so you do not wait till the last minute to you, you know get off a new film stock you will always at the month end of a month you will actually issue new radio or x ray film boxes so always make sure you rotate your stock in such a way that you place your older stock of the films in front as compared to the newer film stocks so that you do not have any accumulation of any old films always make sure always keep it in mind whoever disposes radiograph or uh, x ray films from the main dispensary make sure that the oldest films are used first when compared to the latest new films but always make sure before you take films from the old stock they are never beyond their expiry date no film should ever be used beyond its expiry date and not only that always storing of film stocks whether it's the old or new should always be in a cool dry facility away from the radiation source it should not be in a hot humid area because it can lead to fogging or fungus formation or any other sort of um you know uh, debris or uh, sort of de uh, deterioration of the quality of your x ray film the fourth task that has to be followed monthly is the checking of your exposure charts make sure that the proper kvp milliamperes and exposure times are being listed for each of your projections and it should be posted by 
at the side of each x-ray machine and that is what is being actually followed if there is any sort of variation that has to be followed that has to be immediately made changes into your exposure charts which is there on side of each x-ray machine the last thing that you have to check basically is your leaded aprons and your collars. You are supposed to be visually inspecting your leaded aprons and collars for any cracking. Okay. <clears throat> So, in, like I said, visual acuity could vary. So, and much more definitive method is by doing a fluoroscopic examination where you have fluorescent light moving over the entire uh, lead apron or the collar and you can confirm for any sort of cracks, okay? So, how do these cracks usually form is basically because you do not actually um, store them properly. You're supposed to be always storing leaded aprons and collars by hanging them over a hook or by draping them over a handrail. So if you do not do that, you can all see it like these pictures, you can always have cracks. So cracks which are not visually, uh, you know, which you cannot see with your naked eye can always be confirmed with your fluoroscopic examination. And the moment if you see any sort of folding that can that is leading to tears or any sort of a hole or a crack that has to be replaced immediately. Otherwise, that is uh, you know, a mistake on your radiographic protection measures that you actually follow. So those are the five monthly tasks that I just finished. Now moving on to your yearly task, that is the task that you have to do at the end of every single year is basically nothing but calibrating your x-ray machine. You do not do that every day, you do not do that weekly, you do not do that monthly. Ideally, it is being done at the end of a year. Usually, X-ray machines are quite stable and if, you know, followed all the manufacturer's uh, instructions, they're quite stable. But still at the end of the year, we are supposed to be having dental servicing done by dental servicing companies or by health physicists who will do acceptance test, acceptance test. These are a set of tests that is actually carried out on a dental machine or dental X-ray machine to make sure that all the parameters are actually adequate and in proper functioning uh, level. Okay, so the first thing that you have to check or the health physicist or the dental service companies will actually check is basically the x-ray output. And that is ideally done by using a radiation dosimeter because that will help in measuring the intensity and the reproducibility of the radiation output. Always keep it in mind, like I said, it is not us, we dentists, who actually do this calibration of the x-ray machine, we are supposed to be calling the dental x-ray service companies or there are health physicists that you can always contact who will come and perform these set tasks, which is actually called as, like I mentioned earlier, acceptance tasks. Okay, the second thing what they will check is basically for your collimation and your beam alignment. Your collimators, um, are, according to your ADA recommendation, should never be more greater than two to two, three by fourth inches. So they will come and they will check whether your field diameter of your collimator is within the acceptable range. And also your PID and aiming cylinders are closely aligned with your X-ray beam. The third thing that they will check or the third parameter that they will check is basically your beam energy. And energy is basically measured in terms of KVP, that is kilo voltage. Okay, so the X-ray beam should have the sufficient energy for good adequate film exposure as we expect without any excessive soft tissue dosage. So the KVP that we expect or, or the settings that we put for the KVP, that is the amount of KVP that the X-ray beam that is exiting from the X-ray machine should ideally have. Because if you excessively expose the soft tissues of the patient to more than what is expected, you can, you can actually lead them to all your the deterministic and stochastic changes in that particular patient, which is not in terms with your rules of your radiation protection. The fourth thing and very important thing is your timer. That is, if you have put an exposure for five seconds, it should never be more than five seconds. It should not even be 5.5 milliseconds. It should be very accurate and it should be reproducible. That is, every single exposure should be adequately timed just the way that we have kept it. The four, fifth thing that they check is basically the MA or the current. And this is basically done by a step wedge or a dosimeter. This is a pictorial representation of an aluminum ready-made available uh, step wedge other than the one which I mentioned that you can do with your lead foil. 
All right. And the sixth thing is your tube head stability. This invariably always will have, the, you know, there'll be some sort of working to be done on this tube head stability because you would have taken multiple radiographs at multiple angulations at multiple projections. So invariably the winding in your tube head would have definitely gone loose up to some extent. So the way that they check is that once you stabilize that position of your X-ray tube on that particular area of a interest it should not move at all till your exposure is over so once you position that film in case if it's for maxillary projection you position your x-ray tube a pid to that particular area of interest and by the time you go behind the lead barrier and expose it it should never move away from your area of interest it should be completely stable till your exposure is over and the last thing that they check is basically your focal spot size. So the size of the focal spot, this is all within the machine. Keep it in mind, this is not something that we control. It is all with your X-ray machine. So the size of the focal spot on repeated and on excessive use can actually become large on its own. So we do not know this because we do not find, we do not know whether the focal spot has been increased or not because this is all something within the X-ray machine. So in case of ex excessive heat that is on excessive use, there'll be excessive heat that is being built up with in your x-ray machine that can actually lead to enlargement of your size of your focal spot and that can actually ultimately lead to geometric fuzziness that is nothing but you will use the image sharpness your edge sharpness and your resolution will actually be reduced so these are the seven tasks that you have to do not you it is recommended to be done by a dental service company or a health physicist on under um, at the end of every year so to basically conclude, nothing but radiographs are indispensable for a patient diagnosis. Hence, optimization of all steps in your imaging chain, whether it's your exposure, whether it's your dental x-ray machine, whether it's your dark room safe lighting or your processing equipment and your solutions, everything has to be in optimal working conditions so that you actually are able to give the maximum diagnostic yield with reduced radiation dose at low cost to the patient. Hence, for these, you should always have quality assurance programs which are working in your dental radiology setup and one person in charge should be kept. It should not be that multiple people are in charge of multiple things because there's always a chance of a blame game that can always come in such situations. So always one person should be made in charge of the radiology quality assurance program because these are all very quickly accomplished tasks at very low cost, but they can have significant influence on your radiographic quality. So I hope it's very clear and this is something that has to be not just followed in your dental setup, in your uh, uh, school of dentistry, but it is something that has to be followed when you practice in your hospital or in your clinics for adequate quality of radiographs. Thank you.